So question 21, 2011 Higher Maths Paper 1. Part A, we're asked to find the equation of diagonal BD, given this, diag this diagram, and we're given the various coordinates of four of the points on the diagram. So let's separate part of this work area into rough working, and we'll have the proper solution appearing down in here. So first thing I'd recommend is that you take the information that's required. We're dealing with points B and D. We take this information here and transfer it to the diagram. So B is the point 7, 12 and D is the point 2, minus 3. And to find the equation of a line, we need to know two things about this. First of all, we need to know a point on the line. And in this case, there's not a problem with that. We've got two points that we know that are on the line, B and D. And the second thing we need to know is the gradient uh, of the line. Um, usually purposes of formula, the point is called a, b, and the gradient is by, called m, in which case the formula for the equation, it's like down the equation, is y minus the y-coordinate of a point that we know on the line equals the gradient times x minus the x-coordinate. So this is a very well used formula uh, in the paper so you must know how to use this. Okay so let's get these two pieces of information uh, worked out. Uh, first of all let's do the gradient. So the gradient you always use M of the line BD so we we'll use a subscript BD formula for this y difference, that's the difference of the two y coordinates, over the x difference. So on the top, y difference 12 minus minus 3. And the point we started with, which was b, we have to start with for the x difference on the bottom of the fraction. So it's 7 7 minus 2. So the y difference, difference of the two y coordinates is 12 plus 3, which would be 15. And 7 minus 2 is 5. So we've got a gradient of 3. And we'll just check that visually. Uh, gradient of 3 is 1 along 3 up. Um, so certainly 1 along 3 up. Uh, 1 along 3 up. You can see that that's roughly uh, 1 to 3. There you go. There's a rough picture of the, the steepness we should have. So it, it seems right. Um, point on line is, well, let's use this point 712. And therefore the equation of line is so we use this formula, so it's y minus the y-coordinate of the point that we're working with. So it's 12, y minus 12 equals the gradient, which we know is 3, times x minus the x-coordinate. That's the x-coordinate of the point that we're using that's on the line. So there we are, y minus 12 equals 3 lots of x minus 7. We need to uh, tidy this up a bit, get rid of the brackets. 3 lots of x, uh, 3 times minus 7 is minus 21. Uh, it's customary in cases like this when we're, we're going on to use these equations to get the letters on the left, numbers on the right. So uh, I would add 12 to both sides, take away 3x from both sides. So we'll get a y minus 3x and add 12 to both sides, we'll get a minus 9. So that's the equation.
And I think it's useful at this point to go to your diagram and annotate the diagram. Just write up what we've discovered. So I'm adding a label uh, to this diagram to show that I know what the equation of this line is. And it's y minus 3x equals minus 9. Moving on to part B, we're told now that the equation of this other diagonal of the quadrilateral is x plus 3y equals 23. So we have another fact about one of the lines in this diagram. The equation of this is x plus 3y equals 23. And this part of the question asks us to find the coordinates of the point where these two lines intersect. So we're trying to find the x value and y value um, of a point that lies on this line and must satisfy the equation of BD and it also lines, lies on AC and therefore satisfies the equation of line AC. Now this is a classic case for simultaneous equations. So the point lies on x plus 3y equals 23 and it also lies on the other line, the equation we found was y minus 3x equals minus 9. Let's just uh, put it, line them up. We've got a negative 3x, we've got a y, and we've got a minus 9. To get rid of one of these letters, x or y, we must get the same number in front of the letter in, in each occasion. I, I think possibly the easiest one is to multiply the second one by 3 and therefore leave the first one unchanged. So there's the first equation. It's equation of AC. Just leave it as it is. And multiplying everything in this second equation by 3 would get minus 9x plus 3y equals, and 3 nines are 27, with the negative minus 27. So these two equations have to work at the same time. We have to get rid of, we've chosen the y's to get rid of because we've made them both the same. Now if I subtract these two equations, x minus minus 9x be x plus 9x, which is a 10x, 3y minus 3y is 0, 23 minus minus 27 is like 23 plus 27, that comes to 50. So therefore, x equals, divide both sides by 10, x equals 5. Now, we therefore take x equals 5 and go back to either of these two equations. Let's take the first one, x plus 3y equals 23. We now know x is 5, so let's rewrite this equation, replacing x by the 5. So instead of x plus 3y, we get 5 plus 3y. That gives us 23. I think we'd subtract 5 from both sides. 3y would be uh, 18. And therefore, y would be divided both sides by 3, y would be 6. Okay, so therefore, y equals 6. And we've therefore found this point. Uh, e is the point, x coordinate 5, y coordinate 6. And let's just add that to the information on our diagram. So finally, moving on to part C of this question, we have to find the equation of the perpendicular bisector of AB. Now, bisector means midpoint. Let's call it M. So we'll start off by saying let M be the midpoint 
of AB. Nice explaining what they're doing. Let M be the midpoint of AB. And to find the equation of the, the perpendicular bisector, which is this line here at right angles to AB, um, we, again we need to know a point in this line, we also know, need to know the line's gradient. So let's work out the coordinates of the point M first of all. It's the midpoint of AB. A, from the information given, is minus 1, 8. The midpoint we would get by averaging the x-coordinates of a and b and the y-coordinates of a and b. Averaging, I mean the mean value. So we add them up, the two x's, minus 1 and 7, and divide by 2. And similarly for the y-coordinates, we add them up, 8 and 12, and divide by 2. So that's the mean value, the average value of these, um, which gives us 6 over 2, which is 3, and 20 over 2, which is 10. So we've found the point M. It's 3, 10. Let's now try and work out the uh, gradient of this perpendicular bisector of AB. So first of all we will need to work out the gradient of uh, AB. So the gradient of the line AB, y difference over x difference, y difference this time is 12 minus 8, starting with the point B, 12 minus 8. The x difference, starting with B again, 7 minus minus 1. So we get 4 over 8. That's 1 half. So basically 1 along we go a half up. Or 2 along we go 1 up. 2 along we go 1 up. Looks right. The perpendicular gradient to a line with gradient of a half. Remember the result, we invert the fraction, turn fraction upside down and change the sign. So we get minus 2 over 1, which is minus 2. And a gradient of minus 2 would be 1 along 2 down. Look at this line, 1 along 2 down, 1 along 2 down on this line here. Um, it looks reasonable. Um, so we now have two facts. Point on line is 310, that's the point M. And gradient is minus 2. So equation is, remember it's, the thinking was y minus b equals m x minus a. We used that formula in the previous part of this question. So it's y minus the y-coordinate, which is 10 equals the gradient, which is minus 2, x minus the x-coordinate, which is 3. And let's tidy that up. y minus 10 equals, multiplying out the bracket, minus 2x plus 6, minus 2 times minus 3 is plus 6. And let's uh, put all letters on the left, numbers on the right, just a habit. y add 2x to both sides, so put 2x appear here, the minus 2x will disappear. We add 10 to both sides, that'll disappear. 10 onto 6 is 16. Uh, so there is the equation of this perpendicular uh, bisector. So now that we know that, let me just add that uh, label up here. Remember, what an equation of a line means is that every point on that line, the values of the coordinates, must satisfy that equation. So if we're to prove that the point E, this is for part 2, show that this line passes through E, if we're to show that it passes through E, we must show that the x and y values of the coordinates of point D satisfy that equation. So let me just finish this off by saying for point D, when x equals 5, 
and y equals 6. Let's look at y plus 2x and see what it comes to. y plus 2x will be equal to 6 plus 2 lots of 5. 6 plus 10, 16. And we can conclude E, which is the point 5, 6, uh, lies on the perpendicular bisector. Why? Because it satisfies y plus 2x equals 16. So that's the finish of the solution to question 21.